While WWE has championships for the United States, the United Kingdom, and even the entire universe, there is one championship that has gone vacant for quite some time. Which should leave you feeling a bit underrepresented, because no matter who or where you are, you are a part of who this championship is meant to represent. So let's bring some attention to this unofficial title, as it's the topic of this episode, because today, Dave knows the People's Champion. A term first popularized in mainstream culture by the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Yup, that's right, yet again this legendary boxer is contributing to the world of professional wrestling. Let's go back to the 1960s, March of 1967 to be exact, because this is when Muhammad Ali had his boxing license denied in every state, as well as being stripped of his US passport, as well as his World Heavyweight Boxing Championship. This all happened because Ali refused entry into the United States Armed Forces, which was operating on a draft system at the time and not on a volunteer basis. Having no desire to fight in the Vietnam War, and seeking racial equality, Ali's protest would result in him being banned from boxing until 1971. But during that time, with him no longer allowed to be an official boxing title holder, and his social and political beliefs giving a voice to many who wanted to be heard, he was considered to be a different kind of champion. One who would represent the people. The people's champion, if you will. An unofficial title that he held onto well after his reinstatement to the world of boxing and even after he regained the world heavyweight title that he never lost. And the world of boxing was not done yet with this term, as boxer Manny Pacquiao began his own political party named the People's Champ Movement in 2009. But what about the world of wrestling? Well, let's take a look at wrestler Diamond Dallas Page. In World Championship Wrestling, DDP would embody that of the everyman. And pro wrestling has often had wrestlers who could relate to the common folk. Whether it was Big Daddy in England or the son of a plumber Dusty Rhodes himself, having a performer that fans could relate to is a great way for a promotion to connect to their audience. Now what made wrestlers such as Big Daddy and Dusty Rhodes appeal to the masses was that they were very much not typical in terms of what wrestlers normally were. Whether it was their physiques or their mannerisms or their upbringing, they were built on the idea that they were one of us. Then enter Diamond Dallas Page. Starting off as a manager and even doing some commentary, Page's personality was strong enough to get him through the door. He even had a tryout in the WWF as an announcer, followed by a quick gig driving rhythm and blues to the ring at WrestleMania 6. But despite all this, Page didn't make his in-ring debut as a wrestler until 1991, and he only did so after taking advice from Magnum TA, a man who himself was once considered to be a possible heir to the Dusty Rhodes working class throne. Then after receiving training from several members of the industry, including the American Dream Dusty Rhodes himself, Diamond Dallas Page became a professional wrestler at the tender young age of 35 years old surprisingly late in the game to just be getting started. Even after sustaining an injury and being fired, DDP would not give up. He decided to further hone his craft by seeking out pointers in ring psychology from the master and another unconventional favorite. Jake the Snake Roberts. From there, he would return to WCW, this time accompanied by his wife Kimberly. But his biggest success came from his feud with the NWO, beginning in late 1996. This all started as the Outsiders Hall and Nash, who were both former partners of Page, began assisting him during a tournament to crown a brand new US Champion. However, after feeling that Page wasn't exactly grateful for the help, they decided to teach him a lesson firsthand, beating him down and costing him the title. And this was the exact moment that would launch DDP to becoming a star in WCW. With Sting still on a storyline hiatus, there needed to be a foil for the New World Order. And with Page getting over with fans, he was the perfect person to fight the good fight against the NWO during this time. This is what made him the common man, rebelling against the empire of villains taking over WCW. And by doing so, he became WCW's People's Champion. But I know, there's another wrestler that many of you are thinking of when it comes to discussing... The People. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Back in 1996, hardly anyone knew the man he was about to become, but maybe, just maybe, a certain someone did. At a major function, Dwayne was shaking hands and networking with those in attendance. But one guest in particular caught his attention. The Rock was enthused to walk over and introduce himself to none other than... Muhammad Ali. That's right, the champ himself. And after making his acquaintance as The Rock began to pull away, Ali pulled him back and whispered, Can you rumble? The Rock replied, Yeah. I think I can. Now even though the two had met very early on in Dwayne Johnson's life, this would be the definitive moment in which The Rock Rocky Maivia would shake hands with the legend. 
Then in 1998, The Rock began calling himself the People's Champ in order to honor the legend. And on one fateful night in Louisville, Kentucky, Ali's family came out to see The Rock wrestle. Dwayne spoke with Ali's wife and told her that he calls himself the People's Champ out of respect. And he also said that he would stop right then and there if Ali himself did not approve. She responded, Oh no, he loves it. He wants you to call yourself that. And just like that, the great one got his approval from the greatest. So, as you can see, some earned the title by being the voice of the people, others by representing those with blue collars, and others managed to inherit it. But either way, having a champion that the people can call their own is something that we can always appreciate, as it's always good to have a champ in your corner. But what do you think? Do we currently have a people's champion in wrestling, and who should it be? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe right here to Dave Knows Wrestling. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave Knows.